Hello, I just want to show you this theme chooser feature they've got on the Studio Press site um, because it's it's quite useful to help you choose a theme that will be um, suitable for your business or your, your website. So you need to search for Studio Press, choose a WordPress theme. If you search Google for Studio Press, choose a WordPress theme, you'll find this page. Now. There's several different bits to the page. Then you can the the um, you can filter the the themes that you see depending on whatever you're interested in. So if we have a look here, the first thing there is is the col theme colours. So suppose you are interested in a a theme that has a little bit of green in it. You click that, and it'll show you themes that have got some green in them. Or if you're interested in blue, try that one, and it'll show you themes that have got some blue in them. Now that you might or might not care about the colours, but if you do, you can do that. Whenever you choose any of these, when you've had a look at the themes that pop up and see which ones you like, deselect it. Otherwise, you'll be very restricted in what you see over here. So, then after you've had a look at the different colours, um, you can choose a category such so as business, uh, magazine, and new style. Or uh, if you're a, ph a photographer, you could choose this one. It'll show you themes that, it, that Studio Press believe are useful to fo for photographers. Um, and then if you want to, just just scroll through and find the one that you might want to look at, and then you just click the image. And where have we got to that one? You can go through to look at the uh, the demo theme. So, um, so what have we got? Could start mobile responsive. I think nowadays you really do need a mobile responsive theme. So many people have got iPads or um, you know mobile phones where they can see the uh, the internet and things. Now, see, there's only four themes there. That's because we've still got the category of photography chosen. So deselect that, and it'll show you more. See, so you've got loads more now. So we're looking at mobile responsive themes. Now, why is it important to have a mobile responsive theme? If you have a look at this, this is the, um, I've forgotten which theme it is now. <laughs> I've forgotten which theme this one is now. But it's um, it's mobile responsive. So this is how it looks on a, on a desktop computer. But if we had a laptop, well, if you had um, a, an iPad or something like that with a smaller screen, We'll reduce the size of the screen. See how it's changed there. And at certain sizes, it, it triggers a different sort of layout. And as you make it smaller and smaller and smaller, you can actually get down to use the size you would use on a mobile phone, and still the theme will work OK. Uh, and that's what mobile responsive means. It means that as you use a smaller and smaller screen, the site will change slightly to make it still usable on um, more or less any size of a screen and I think nowadays you, re you really do need a mobile responsive theme so let's have another look what can we choose next custom header if you've got your own logo and you want to see only themes that will allow you to put a graphic header in here then click this one that says custom header now Supposing your logo doesn't have a blue background, you would have to change your logo to make it suit or a black background, depending on the theme you pick. But at least it gives you the chance to put, I'll just show you. This is like my logo there. Um, the, the theme's called Balance. And on the Balance theme, let's see if we can find it. Balance is this theme here. Now, on that one, when you install the theme, it doesn't have a graphical uh, there. It's not. It's not a, an image logo. It's just text. But because it's got the um, where do we get to this custom header, it allows you to put in a custom header. So I could change this text for this my logo here. I made a logo and just put it in there. Not the world's best logo, but I was just trying to prove a point. So. That's what it means when it says custom header. It means you can put your own logo somewhere up at the top here. 
what else can you do or layout the different different themes some have um, just one column this one has just got one column it doesn't have any sidebars but most of them have got at least um, a sidebar and a content area and quite a lot of them have got left hand sidebar right hand sidebar and content and some have all sorts of different configurations of sidebars so if you want um, themes if you've got to have two you know a left and a right and th sidebar just click three columns and that'll show you themes that have got uh, a left hand and a right hand sidebar sometimes you've got uh, two left hand sidebars side by side and then the content so there's all sorts of different configurations you can have right oh, and this bit here there's the themes from studio press and themes from the community if you know what the pro plus package is these are themes from studio press are in the pro plus package and themes from the community are not but if you're buying it's just buying a single theme you're buying genesis framework and one theme it doesn't really matter which one you choose there um that's just in case if, you, if you're a developer or a web designer or whatever um these are the ones that are included in the pro plus package it's like a bumper bundle of um of these themes well is there anything else you need to know oh, i'll tell you what i'll tell you the, this magazine theme here the, the 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 way that the you set up your front page there's two basic ways to set up your front page you can either use widget areas if you know if you use wordpress you've probably heard of widget areas and what you do you you put things into these little boxes that's the one box here one box there and then this one is a box that's got one two three um these are posts featured posts in them and what you do you just um th these are widget areas and you drag this thing called a widget into the widget area and then you set it up that's a featured post widget and we dragged it in there and set it up so what we've got there is um a featured post and it's from the celebrities category i think that one um and so WordPress will automatically find the post and put it in there. So you just once you've dragged this into one of these widget areas, you just set it up. You go through the list. You've got to choose a category, um, decide whether you want to show a featured image, how big the featured image should be. You want to show some the post title and some content, things like that. Uh, but the, that the, the basically two types of setting up one uses widget wid, one type uses widget areas and the other uses what they call the loop if you know what if you have any dealings with wordpress you've probably come across a thing called the loop the loop is just all of your blog posts and the most recent blog posts will appear at the top and then all the blog posts will appear underneath these where they're set out like this in this little grid they call it, it's called the grid loop um but basically that's all it is it's just a list of the blog posts you've made right i'll just quickly explain about um all the themes let's have a look oh, all the web browsers not all the themes um let's see some of them are modern themes they, they're um, they're designed to work well on things like iPads, but they're not really that. The Studio Press hasn't really tried to make them work on old computers. By old computers, I mean Internet Explorer 8. Now, if you look at this, it's, it's laid out in this nice um, little layout here, where the things are side by side. But if you look at that on an older computer, let's see. We're going to we want to see what it would look like in Internet Explorer 8. So there we go. Now you see how that there is that the things are one above the other, but and that that's how it would look on Internet Explorer 8. But on a modern browser, it looks like this. So if if you really want your site to look good on older old web browsers which this, this one's from 2008 is Internet Explorer 8 so it's five years old which is in computer terms that's really old but bear that in mind some of the more modern themes won't look just the same in on really old computers 
Well, I think that's more or less all I need to tell you. Oh, but I'll tell you about the email signups. Some of the, um, some if you want a a really prominent email sign up form on your site, some of these uh, things like this generate one's the real classic example. This is made really to to really focus people's attention on your email sign up box. So it's obvious you can't miss it. Join us and you've got this email sign up box there um, so some of the themes are designed just specifically that for that for a lot of s small service selling professionals this is exactly what they want um, if that's what you want there are several themes that uh, that offer that let's see if we can find some focus that one's the same just quickly look at that one see it's got the sign up box there but there's several of them that are like that oh this balance that one's the same so it's got a really obvious sign up box so it's worth rooting through and finding the one that suits you well i think that's all i need to tell you i do hope you uh, have a good have a good look around don't just pick a, a theme kind of you know don't just jump in and think oh that one will do have a good look around because there are, there are a lot of themes there's 40 in the studio press uh, themes and then there's quite a lot more in these um community themes well Thanks for watching and bye for now.